Mr. Harris here and welcome to our first video of chapter 9.2. In this video, we're going to talk about how we could distinguish between acids and alkalis. So in the previous video, we talked about what acids and alkalis are. But in this one, we're going to try and identify them. So have a look at the picture in the diagram on the left. You see two unlabeled beakers. So my question is, which one is an acid and which one is an al alkali? How do you know? What ways or methods could you use to identify them? So that's what this video is going to be about. So the first method or first way to identify them is by using natural indicators. So natural indicators are substances that you can find in nature, such as plants. Okay, so these substances allow us, it shows us different colors when, they're come, when they come into contact with acidic or alkaline solutions. So for example, if you use a natural indicator on an acid, it might show you a red color for an acid, but if you put the same natural indicator in an alkaline solution, it might show you a different color, say for example, blue, okay? So another word that I like to use for indicator could be something that helps you identify or distinguish. Okay, so let's look at one experiment that will allow us to understand this better. So in this experiment, we'll be using, again, plant extracts to compare the colors between acids and alkalis. So in this particular experiment, we'll be using red cabbage. Now you may ask me, Mr. Harris, when I look at the picture, it's actually purple. It's not red in color. The cabbage is not red in color. It's purple. So towards the end of this video, I'll explain further why is this cabbage called red instead of being called purple cabbage. Okay, now let's look at the experiment. So first of all, of course, you will need to cut the leaves and boil the, the cabbage leaves using a Bunsen burner. And then afterwards, you will need to get the extract out so that the leaves are remaining behind. And then you would pour the extract into three different test tubes, test tube A, B, and C. And if you notice in the previous video, I also talked about not exceeding more than one third. Okay, so this is another lab skill that I would like to remind you again. So whenever we have any experiment to do to deal with solutions and test tubes, please make sure that the test tube does not exceed beyond one third. Okay, so in test tube A, we'll be also pouring water. In test tube B, we'll be pouring in acid. And in test tube C, we will pour in an alkali. Okay. So let's have a look. So as I mentioned, in test tube A, we'll be adding distilled water. So you will add around three, three to four drops. That will be good enough. And remember to shake gently. Hopefully, when school resumes, we'll be able to do most of the ex experiments that I show you over here, depending on time, of course. But if you remember how we are able, we need to shake it gently is by holding your test tube and then using your finger to swing it over here. Okay, Alex, again, I'll hopefully when school resumes, I'll be able to show you this, but we need to shake gently in order to allow the distilled water and the red cabbage extract to mix evenly. Lemon juice, do you guys recall what lemon juice is? Is it an acid or an alkali? Yes, it's an acid. And finally, in test tube C, we have soap solution, which is an alkali.
Okay. So after we've mixed all three, let's have a look at the results. So the original color of the red cabbage, you can have a look at the picture on the top right. It is purple. Let me go ahead and write that down. Purple. How about in distilled water? Distilled water, which is test tube A. Lemon juice is test tube B. Soap solution is test tube C. Okay, how about in test tube A? Water is neither acidic nor alkaline. So that would mean the color would remain the same. Okay, the color remains the same. What about for an acid? In this particular acid, for this red cabbage extract, it will turn red in color. And for the soap solution, it would turn green in color. Okay, do you notice something? Do you notice that in an acid solution, the color changes from purple to red, while in while in an alkaline solution, it changes from, from purple to green. You have a difference in color over here. So this difference in color allows us to indicate which one is an acid and which one is an alkaline. Okay, let's look at another example using red rose. So actually, the color of the red rose petal is actually pink in color. So a bit tricky. This is pink. The original color is pink. In distilled water, what should the color be? Yes, it should be pink because it's neither acidic nor alkaline. How about in lemon juice? In lemon juice, in acid, it is, again, it is red for this one. And for an alkaline solution, it turns orange. So you would notice that for an acid solution, the color turns from pink to red. And for an alkaline solution, the color turns from pink to orange. There is a difference in color over here. So we can know which one is an acidic solution and which one is an alkaline solution. So let's answer this question. Can the extracts of red cabbage leaves and red rose petals be used as acid alkali indicators? If so, why? So of course the answer is yes, because they show different colors in acid and alkali solutions. Okay. So these cabbages, uh, the, the cabbage leaves and red rose petals, they contain pigments, which shows the different colors in acid and acid and alkaline solutions okay the pigments for example in this one was a purple color in the red cabbage leaf and in this case for the red rose petal it was a pink pigment and these pigments allowed us to identify and to allow us to compare the colors in acidic and alkaline solutions okay and again we didn't use the leaves we used the extracts which were obtained from the leaves. So my, another example is um, a hibiscus plant. So the original color over here is pink. Let me go ahead and write that down. Pink. And in acidic solutions, it turns into orange color. While in an alkaline solution, it turns yellow in color okay you can't really see but you can see, see from the diagram so
So to wrap up, some plants contain pigments. Pigments which show different colors in acidic and alkaline solutions and they can be used as indicators to help us distinguish between acids and alkalis. Okay? So just to before we head into why red cabbage is called the red cabbage, just to summarize what we have learned. So natural indicators, some examples we've learned just now are two plants. Let's go ahead and write that down, red cabbage. And just now we also talk about red roses, but <clears throat> let me say hibiscus. Okay, and what do they contain? What do they contain? What do these plants contain? They contain pigments. And these pigments allow us, what do, what do they allow us to do? They allow us to act as indicators to distinguish acid and alkali okay so the important the main point for today's video i want to talk about is the natural in indicators containing pigments which help us to indicate uh, and distinguish between acids and alkalis because they would show up with different colors yes Okay, now let's come back to why a red cabbage is called a red cabbage. Now a red cabbage is actually called that because if you notice, in an acidic solution, red cabbage shows us with red color. Now, where these cabbages are grown, they're grown in the soil. The soil is actually acidic in nature so when the soil is acidic in nature naturally the cabbage's color will turn into yes it will turn red in color hence why we call it red cabbage however when it's in a neutral neutral environment for example when it's placed into water or some other environment it will turn into purple in color okay so that's the end of this video this was chapter 9.2 and we talked about natural indicators. So please make sure you have subscribed to the channel so whenever there is a new video you can immediately watch it and please share it amongst your friends.